know, casual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna read the scripture, then pray, and then we're gonna get into it. Okay. Uh, Psalms 119, verse uh, 130. It says, "The teaching of your word gives light, so even the simple can understand." I know. I said I was gonna read this first, and then oh. pray, and then get into it. Psalms 19, verse 130. The teaching of your word gives light so even the simple can understand. God, as we get into your word today, we ask you, Lord, um, that it provides light. And you said even the, um, the simple will be able to understand. So we ask you, Lord, to just give us um, more understanding uh, of your word so that we can learn, not only um, glean from your word, but be able to apply it to our lives and be able to be that shining light to those who are looking for you. Uh, and it's in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so. Psalms 119, verse 30. 130. Yes. And I'll read it again, too, because um, the reason uh, the reason why I was, uh, I read that because I started in, I don't have an end date, but what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be studying on is the study of the Antichrist. So, I started um, diving into it, and I remember learning about, you know, the Antichrist. And typically, usually when a lot of uh, calamity and things start happening, um, we'll hear from different um, ministers as far as the end times. And, you know, Jesus even talked about this before he, was, uh, before he died and was resurrected, about what the signs to look for in the end times. And they've been talking about the end times for, for decades. Right. So, especially now, everything that's going on, more people are, it's increasing. They're talking about the end time and the Antichrist. So, I've learned about the Antichrist, but I wanted to do a little bit more um, deeper of a study. So, I kind of want us to go on a journey. So, the Antichrist, it'll kind of lead us to teachings and other things that God wants us to know. Ecclesiastes 11. So... In talking, in talking and learning about the Antichrist and then learning about prophecies, one thing that was, uh, as I started to learn more about God and, and his word, is that the things that we hear shouldn't so much go over our head and, or it shouldn't be so confusing. So because God, he's not the author of confusion. And of course, he always says, and all you're getting, get understanding. So as I started reading, and I even looked at different commentaries, I started thinking, like, why is there so many uh, different school of thoughts, different interpretations and meanings of the Antichrist and the end times? As far as the fundamental things, we don't necessarily, well, some do, but for the most part, you don't hear a lot of different interpretations about Jesus being born of, you know, Virgin Mary and died and was resurrected. That's pretty much solid and solidified. But when it comes to different meanings of the Antichrist and um, the dragon and the beast, it's, it's, to me, it seems like it's kind of muddy and murky. So as I started reading into the scriptures, and I want us all to go on this journey, I don't know how many weeks, but once I went on this journey, I started learning. I'm like, I think we're just taking uh, the things that we're hearing, and it's just making us even more confused because this person is maybe saying, you know, jump, this person is saying roll over, this person is saying lay flat, and then it's like, which is it, you know? So that's why I wanted to, I wanted us to kind of go on this journey together. So a few things, it's like, I started asking a question, like, what is the Antichrist? Is it one? Is it a lot? Is it here? Is it coming? What should we look out for? Who is it? Just different things. So I wanted to kind of just go and just look in through the scriptures nothing outside of uh, the scriptures to have that foundation instead of kind of trying to build and create our own like theologies and own imagination and interpretations of the Antichrist. So fundamental question I started to ask, so what is the Antichrist? So of course the scripture is going to tell us it's a spirit, of course it's a deceiver. Ultimately the Antichrist is one who opposes Christ. So when we think of the Antichrist, we know that it's, it's a spirit, of course. It's, it's a one who's deceiving, um, who uh, you know, uses deception, and also one who opposes Christ. So I know when we're thinking about is this person or that 
type of people, the Antichrist. We know that the Antichrist is one that opposes Christ. Also, one thing that I've learned, so there's a connection between the Antichrist and also the false prophet. Um, this false prophet is more of a religious personality that's going to win the allegiance of people. So there is a connection. I've learned that there is a, con uh, there's a connection between the Antichrist and also the false prophet. All right, so then I started asking, so how can we distinguish or how can we know who is a false prophet or what is a false prophet? Of course, we know a false prophet, one that doesn't tell the truth, but I want to be able to distinguish. So I'll be reading out of New Living Translations. So go with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, uh, verses 20 through 22. So there's just a fundamental question. I want to be able to distinguish between a true prophet and a false prophet. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22. So there's a connection between the Antichrist and also the false prophet. So verse 20, it says, But any prophet who falsely claims to speak in my name or who speaks in the name of any other God must die. But you may wonder, how will we know whether or not a prophecy is from the Lord? If the prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his prediction does not happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. That prophet has spoken without my authority and need not be feared. So this is, this is the person, the prophet who has um, this vision, says, this, uh, says their, gives their own prophecy, but of course it doesn't come to pass. Now I know in technology um, and like whether through different social media outlets, you know, people, they'll give their, their word, you know, that God has spoken. However, they do it a little bit more in hindsight. They'll say, so something has happened and then they'll give their message and they'll say, well, several months or several years back, the Lord told me this and they'll give their, they'll give their, the word. And then of course, some people, and it could be true, may not, but of course you'll listen to it and then they'll say, well, you know, that did happen, this did happen, this did happen. And then they'll forecast and they'll say, well, this is what's going to happen a few months down the road, a few years down the road. You're more likely to believe that person just because of, so several years back, the Lord told me this and this happened. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's not a true prophet, but those, um, to me, it's, um, you know, I have my, I guess my flags up or I'm just paying attention what they're saying. I understand this happened and this could happen. So we're just waiting to see if that will come to pass. One thing that I've learned too in my um, years of living, if you do something long enough, you can give a pretty accurate prediction of what's going to happen. You know, you think of weather people, you know, they have their training, their study, they can give a pretty good accurate description of what the what of the 10 day forecast and what's going to happen and i believe that likewise you know when you're when you study into the bible or when you're studying to event planning you know or a teacher you can give you can have somewhat of a prediction of what's going to happen now, of course prophecy and prediction are different prophecy is more is god inspired of course go with me to the book of jeremiah chapter 14 verse uh verse 14 so we're just trying to see or want to, dis want to dis dis distinguish between um, a false prophet and a true prophet. And the book of Jeremiah should be after Isaiah. All right. Um, chapter 14, verse 14. So we're just wanting to distinguish this establishment of. Uh, a foundation because we know they're going to be and we'll see here in the scriptures too that there's a connection between the antichrist and the false prophet so verse 14 
Then the Lord said, These prophets are telling lies in my name. I did not send them or tell them to speak. I did not give them any messages. They prophesy, uh, prophesy visions and revelations that they, have, uh, that they have never seen or heard. They speak foolishness made up in their own lying heart. Here, God is just saying these um, prophets, they have their, they have their own um, revelations, their own visions. It, it didn't come from the Lord, of course. And we'll see, we'll look throughout the scriptures in our study of the Antichrist, that the false prophet, the person that's coming out, they're going to give a lot of visions, a lot of um, ideas, different things. It's more subjective out of what they believe, what God is doing or going to do. So, of course, God is telling us, hey, let's be on guard and let's watch out for um, some of these deceptive practices that the false prophet is implementing. Now, the word antichrist, it only appears in the book of John. In all of, in all of the, um, the Bible, the word antichrist, it only appears in the book of John. Although, of course, as I've done my done a little research, there are some references um, to the Antichrist in the book of Dan Daniel, Thessalonians, and also in Revelation, which we'll get into those two as well. Not all of them today, but we'll get into some a little bit. So when we want to know as far as the Antichrist, we, are, we know and we can establish that the word Antichrist is only found into the book of John. Now, what does God want us to know about the Antichrist? Well, let's go and find out. So let's go to the book of um, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And one of the reasons that I wanted to kind of start diving into learning about different things like this is because a lot of times when I hear different stuff of the end times and the antichrist it's kind of like you know it, it sounds a little bit kind of confusing or it's not nothing concrete so as i started reading into the scriptures i'm like it's not it's not that it's not that complicated especially when jesus says like even like little children can understand the scriptures how is it that when when they start talking about different things in the bible that's simple to understand that it just doesn't maybe it's not so concrete in some of the things so first john chapter 2 i'll read i'm going to be reading through verse 18 to 23 so this is what god wants us to know about the antichrist so of course this is deceptions in, in you know in the last hour so verse 18 little children oh, let me read out of the New Living's Translation. Okay. So, dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. We are not like that, for the Holy One has given you his spirit, and all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the father either but anyone who acknowledges the son has the father also so few things um a uh, few things and of course we'll um go into other scriptures but few things that god wants us to know about the antichrist so first we know that the antichrist according to first john 2 is coming and is already here um, so we know that the Antichrist is coming, and then we also know that there's Antichrist here on the earth um, currently, presently. And also, as there have been like an emphasis on one Antichrist, which Revelation talks about or gives reference to that there's one Antichrist, we know in 1 John 2 that there's going to be many. There's 
not just one, but there's a, a lot of different types of, a um, lot of antichrists that are here and that is also coming. So we know that there talks about one, but there's also many, and we know that they're coming, but they're also here. So of course, as a lot of times we'll hear um, is an emphasis on one antichrist, like back in the day, uh, Benito Mussolini was an Italian prime minister, and they were. And it was said that he um, was the antichrist because he wanted to expand the entire the Italian Empire. And then you know the Bible talks about um, expanding the Roman Empire, and because he was the Italian prime minister, they were saying, "Well, Benito Mussolini, he's the antichrist." Um, also, um, in First John two. We know the Antichrist, they were at the church and left, but wasn't actually part of um, the body, a body of the church. So we know here, it says, these, in verse 19, these people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. So we know the Antichrist was a part of the body um, of the church, but wasn't really part of the body they were there they were more of that sheep or the wolf in sheep's clothing also of course we know the antichrist doesn't have the holy spirit so and because they don't have the holy spirit they also they confess and what they say is that jesus he is he isn't christ they deny the father and the son the antichrist they deny that Jesus is the Messiah. The Antichrist doesn't believe in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 through 15, which talks about his resurrection. And I'll go there really quick and read it. Can you repeat that? 1 Corinthians what? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 through 15. The Antichrist doesn't believe in the Messiah. So we know that the Antichrist, they don't believe um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 to 15. So verse 14, of course, it says, And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. The Antichrist does not believe in the resurrection. We know the Antichrist, um, they cannot confess that Jesus is Christ or the anointed one. They don't believe in the Messiah. We know that Christ um, is the anointed one. We know that he died of, you know, you know, he died for our sins and he rose and was raised to life. And the Antichrist cannot confess that. So that's some simple things that we can take away just from knowing um, about the Antichrist as we look to, you know, say, is this person the Antichrist or is that person the Antichrist? Now, the Bible teaches us more about the Antichrist teachings versus who that, um, who the Antichrist is, who they are. So, even um, Martin Luther, he gave the idea that the papacy uh, institution, which is the office of the Pope, um, was the Antichrist. So he popularized the idea that the papacy institution, not rather than, than one um, Pope, um, rather than one Pope, was the Antichrist. So, and a little bit of uh, what's intriguing about the Pope, of course, we know that they were really powerful, but the Pope, they wield so much political power that they had essentially a power, power and authority over the kings and emperors in Europe as Catholicism like spread throughout the nation. One thing that I've learned too, and then we'll also do some study about it, is that you cannot necessarily talk fully or have a full understanding of Christendom um, without a background and understanding of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, as we attempt to like when during the times when we were talking about um, the Antichrist, we'll, we'll label, um, we'll say, well, this person is the Antichrist. I think this person is the Antichrist because X, Y, and Z. But one thing that I've learned and what it led me to is the beast in Revelation. Now, we mix beast and Antichrist as the same person as we attempt to like label and identify um, the person. 
and we'll go and we'll do a lot more studying into it. But um, and what we can can read about, and then we'll talk about it um, most likely next week, is Revelation 13. So Revelation 13 talks about two beasts. It's just two beasts. So, the first beast is the beast from the sea. So, this beast is going to have uh, political power, and they're going to have authority, um, the scripture says, 42 months or three and a half years. So, we know this beast. Um, so, there's two beasts in Revelation 13. So, the first beast, the beast from the sea, they're going to have the, uh, this political power, this political cloud. So, I know a lot of times when we talk about the Antichrist, oh, it's, I'm for sure it's in government. It's, it, you know, I've heard um, speculation is going to come from, uh, it's going to come from um, East Europe or somewhere in the Middle East or here in America. So that's just speculation. So, um, but for now, we know that the first beast, the beast from the sea, they're going to have authority over nations. They're going to rule over king. And then there's the second beast. Now, remember, there's a, a connection between the Antichrist and also um you know, the false prophet. The second beast, which is the beast from the earth, is the Antichrist that will work hand in hand with the first beast. The first beast is the one that has um, that political clout, the, the one that's over, um, the one that has that authority over nations and rules. So this second beast, the beast from the earth, is working hand in hand with the first beast, the person that has authority over the nation, now, this Antichrist that we talk about, the Antichrist is going to deceive many with signs and miracles. So when we think of the Antichrist, we know that the Antichrist is going to deceive, because, and we'll read about it too in Matthew, I believe it's 24, talks about even the very elect or Christian people are, are going to be deceived. Why? Because this Antichrist um, will deceive people with signs and miracles, and they're going to call, and here's what's interesting, and we'll read about it, you can read about it too before me in Revelation 13, it's going to cause us to worship the first beast. Who's the first beast? The person in political power. Um, the one empire that has that, you know, political clout. So we know that this, um, in the scriptures, the two beasts, the one that has the, the political clout, um, that one that rules over nations is going to rule for three and a half years for, or 42 months as the scripture says and then the second beast which is the antichrist remember what we were reading about the antichrist too in 1st John 2 they were part of the church but they never belonged to the church they're the wolf in sheep's clothing so a lot of times when I hear well we'll say this president or that president is the Antichrist. I'm not sure if I believe that because it doesn't line up with what some of the scripture is saying. So is this, is this person performing signs and miracles? Is this Antichrist causing us to worship the first beast who has that political clout and that authority that's going to rule over nations? I think a lot of times when we say this person is the Antichrist, it's more, I don't subscribe or believe in that person's ideology or they don't believe like I believe so therefore this person is has to be the antichrist because they don't believe this um this type of scripture you don't believe in tongues or you don't believe in that or um you know different social services or social issues that you don't necessarily believe in so we'll say well that person's the antichrist I'm not sure if I believe that I can't buy that so okay we know both spirits um, they're being exercised today, right? Um, the, the first beast, and then um, the beast of the sea, and then the second beast, the beast of uh, the earth, the Antichrist, right? Um, we also must remember there's two, um, the fundamental tactics that in um, false teachings that the Antichrist uses. Turn with me to the book of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. So, we 
verses one through four, it's going to be, uh, there's two characteristics that it's talked about in chapter two, verses mm -hmm. one through four. So we're talking about the Antichrist that's deceptive, that's using um, false teaching, right? So Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, after uh, Philippians, Colossians, <laughs> before 10. <laughs> the table of contents work. I love the table of contents. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Chapter Timothy. Uh, it should be before Timothy. Okay. I'm there. Yeah, it's one of those um, those small, it's a small book. You can easily like turn over it's if your pages are combined. Yeah, I understand. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. So this letter is Paul, Silas, and Timothy. We're writing to the church. Oh, am I, I'm in the wrong chapter. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Yeah, I'm in the wrong chapter. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how he will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. He will exalt himself and, de and defy everything that people call God in every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he is God himself. So, of course, we know two characteristics that's being um, talked about. Now, although um, the Antichrist, like the word Antichrist is not mentioned, we know that this person here um, that gives reference to the Antichrist, um, this person here is not telling the truth. And, uh, of course, false prophet doesn't tell the truth. They lie. So the two characteristics, the first type, um, the first characteristic, of course, is lawless. So this person, the Antichrist, we know is lawless. And then also, this, uh, the Antichrist is puffed up in pride. Uh, this Antichrist exalts himself. He takes the place and um, he claims that he is God. Now, of course, um, when we think about this person here being lawless in a uh, and the person that ex ex exalts himself, so we can think sometimes, well, who now, and we don't necessarily have to look for a specific person or type of people, like, you can look and see, is this person exalting themselves? Are they puffed up with pride? Are, do they just blatantly just disregard law? Are, are they lawless? So we know this person is lawless. We know this person is puffed up in pride and, and, and exalts themselves. So as we know the Antichrist is coming and is already here, we can pay attention to the signs because the book of John, it tells us, well, you have the Holy Spirit. So you know the truth and what's the truth and also what is a lie. So, and these are some of the things that I, I believe that's why God tells us to study to show yourself the proof. Right, you know, to you know, you get into the word, you know, you sit at his feet like Mary did and glean from him. Why? Because as we, um, as one of the people, the type of people back in the day, there was those that, um, like the Greeks, they were, uh, they were more like the like theology and philosophy. And I needed to see, I need to have, um, the intellectual, like, you know type of words I need to have like some type of understanding and then there was another type that wanted to see signs and miracles now I think we need to have of course the word and then also you know the signs and the wonders kind of confirm but if you're not in into the word and knowing what God has to say we'll pay attention to the signs and the wonders which is why Jesus said even the very elect is going to be deceived because we're just looking and seeing signs and, and miracles and then that lures us in and we can easily be deceived when we're um, 
uh, you know, by the Antichrist. So, yeah, yeah. So that um, so this uh, concludes of my um, first part. I don't know. I don't have an end part, but we're going to be diving in, looking at different uh, scriptures when it talks about the Antichrist. We'll look at. We'll look more into the beast in Revelation 13, and then there are also some references in Daniel. Although the Sagalor, keep that in mind, but gives reference to it. We'll we'll look at those scriptures too as well, as far as what the Antichrist what they're doing and the tactics that they're using um, and how we can be on guard so that we're not so easily um, deceived. Um, and uh, as we kind of go walk in the light as he is in the light. Yes, so what's your question? So one, I guess, I guess the way that I picture this, like when the Antichrist actually comes, the actual one or whatever. Um, is it almost like he's going to be coming to people's churches and stuff like that? Well, and performing miracles as if he's a minister or something, but he really doesn't. He's demonic for real, but which is why he has actual signs, like why he can perform a miracle because he's not part of the church. He's not a Christian. He's acting like he is or something. So and people are going to take him in and he. Oh, this this mega pastor, or whatever. Like, not I'm not saying like mega pastor, but like this pastor or whatever is gonna come and he's gonna be doing all these miracles. People gonna get healed out of his faith, and they're really gonna believe that this is God. Yeah. So there's a lot of references. You take it with a grain of salt. It could be true. It cannot be true, right? Um, like I've seen several like videos. You know, my friends send me. You'll hear about these miraculous healings and different things that took place. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's false, but just keep that, just be on guard that some people, they, um, like, like, you know, for that I'm going to say, play church, you know? So we know that the Antichrist is a religious, is, has a religious personality. Mm -hmm. So we know that. And then, and then we can look at this too, Matthew, I believe it's seven, it talks about how I performed these, um, I did, you know, I did this, I did that, I did this, yeah. that, and then Jesus was like, apart from me, you worker of, of iniquity, yeah. um, I never knew you. So keep in mind, like, as we, you know, you know, reading the scriptures, we're reading people, we're listening to, um, you know, God's people. We know that the Antichrist is one who deceives. We can blatantly see a person that's not following Christ, you know, has different, has a, another religion of, and, and those things, but there's the wolf also in sheep's clothing it's not so um blatant so we'll we'll identify and we'll look at a person and say well that person is the that person is the antichrist well we can see their lawlessness it's so blatant but then there's a deceptive part and a deceptive tactic the signs and the miracles and the wonder that the antichrist uses yes okay in here a second Thessalonians. yes where it it's the other one we read, and it talks about how there are many that's, that's what I was antichrists. Yeah, in John, first John. First John, two. Yeah, there are many antichrists. Antichrists. So, one example I think was like you asked a question about people in the church that are pretending, like the one guy. Uh, there was at the church and he was going to the Bible study and everything because he was pretending to want to learn scriptures and put all the problems in his plan to kill him. You know that? Oh, the Dylan guy. Do you have that guy? Okay. Uh, She's talking about that, that Dylan guy. That he went that guy to, that killed him. He, 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 was, he was pretending to want to be in this battle state. He was, oh, he, Dylan he, Roof. He Dylan Roof. Roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember murdered those people. Yeah. So it's almost like, okay, there are many, many antichrists. So true. Many true. antichrists. So there, because there are antichrists that are on the earth now, that could be one right there. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Think yeah. about that. But I also think about the lawlessness when you, you, you that was in Thessalonians, that's what I was going to get it to. When you talk about the lawlessness, uh, when you put that, you, you, you're saying in the lawlessness, 
it's not just people that don't respect the law, okay? Mm -hmm. Like what's going on now. Mm -hmm. And you see things that are going on and people, they're angry. So mm -hmm. people are very angry and mm -hmm. they want justice. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it's almost like some people are feeling like that's, this is why this is the end time because people are doing this. But when you're speaking of the Antichrist and the lawlessness, you're speaking of a person who does not recognize who's saying there is no Christ. Yes. And being given into lawlessness. It's not just somebody who's like, I'm not going to follow this or whatever because I'm not being treated like right. mm -hmm. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you look at it the way you do it, you're learning it scripturally, you're like, hey, you got to follow it this way. This is not saying this person is this is the end of the world because these people are not saying they don't. Most of the people down there are praying. Mm -hmm. There's people that's going down there that are praying. People have prayed before they went. There's people in prayer circles that the news is not telling anybody. There's people in prayer circles every day that's going in. Yes, there's people that's being corrupt and all this and that. But there's people that's down there praying too that are in that circle, that are part of that circle, that are not, they're not denying Christ. Mm -hmm. They are Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, yeah. like, we believe in Christ. Yeah. We want God to turn this around. Mm -hmm. And we're asking God to do this because, you know, we um, we know only God's going to make this work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah. When I think of lawlessness, because, I mean, we're believers. We're, you know, we're disobedient. Sometimes we yeah. make mistakes, we mess up, you know, or, you know, you think of something like practical or pragmatic, like. Um, the speed limit, you know, speed right. limit is 55. How many people just um, drive 55, you know, on Gene Snyder, you know? But uh, <laughs> but lawlessness is contradicting God's laws, you know, right. um, in addition to denying Christ, you know, um, cannot confess that with its mouth. But, you know, there are God is telling you to do this, and then you don't want to do that. It's more, and then I believe in Galatians, you know, 6, it talks about the different fruits of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, you know, versus walking in the flesh, you know, or, you know, just contrary to God's Spirit. So when you're thinking of law, when I think of lawlessness, that's what I think of. Yeah, it really, it's, it's really, really good to that. It, 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 yes, yeah, really good, and it made me think uh, from the first John uh, chapter two that made me really think now because if you, you look at some people I remember McGrath or McVay I think his name is McVay and in Oklahoma where he delivered and just took a bomb there to just kill people because you know and, and you look at them you think about uh, the mark of the beast or the end times the end times could possibly be day-to-day -day thing. It could possibly, this is living in the end times and it could have started 10, 15 years ago mm -hmm. because God has no time. Mm -hmm. so, so for me, when I think of the end times, because like you said, they've been talking about the end times like for so many times. For me, to me, the end times mm -hmm. is a uh, day after the resurrection of Jesus. So Jesus died, boom, like you said, no time. So end times. End times now. End time. Yeah, day. so and when I hear when people they'll say end times, we're in the last days. Well, we're in the last days. We're in the end times. So because Jesus already died and was re resurrected, so anytime I hear the end times or last days, okay, I already know that we're in the, the last days and end times. It's, to me, I interpret it days after the resurrection. So when people say that, that's how I that's how I right. listen to it. I guess I should say also, well, in the end times, yeah, from that time forward. Because until Jesus comes back, we are living in those in times. So I guess um, the coming back of Christ. So if you look at it like the coming back of Christ, then there are many, there are many uh, antichrists, right? So these people that do this, because you know, in, in the, I guess before the coming back of Christ, there will be really just blatant evil. It's just evil on the earth that's unbelievable evil. And to me, that person and that kid that went there and pretended to be uh, a, a follower of Christ and he wants to learn about the Bible, his whole plan was to kill these people. This guy taking this bomb, his whole plan is just to kill people. 
and that's evil days. That you know, and so it's different things that's happening and happening. Even back to, you can even go back to Hitler, and uh, you know, and his whole plan was just to kill, to kill, steal, and destroy. So that's Satan. That's what Satan's goal is. Mm -hmm. So that all plays in the end time. Yeah, well, yeah, we're yeah, we're gonna we're gonna die. Oh, we're gonna, wow. we're gonna yeah, say one more thing. Uh, okay. Because because you hear you think of okay, hold on, I just remember this thought. Because you know you think of like prophecy. Because I remember, uh, uh, you know, when two, I guess it was was it the year two thousand or something with Y two K. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and then I started hearing a lot of different things. Okay. Well, the end. This is when Jesus is coming back, and they yeah. had a precise date, and they yeah. break it down and use yeah. different scriptures and yeah. try to say, "Well, Jesus is coming back this day and and that." And then fast forward to today, we're still doing those things. We're having um, like Jeremiah fourteen talks about how you know they have their own visions. I didn't send them. I didn't give them the authority to say that, but you'll have different people, religious personalities that will come out and they'll start saying these things who knows their ulterior motives but that's what they're doing and then i think of um i know in new york many many probably over a decade ago they had signs that said you know we've done good without god um this far why do we need them now and then i think somewhere in the carolinas they were talking about this is so like a long time ago i remember and there one person was saying that he and i mean so many other people they still do that to this day but they were saying like this person is the Christ and had a, like a small following and things like that. Sorry, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say um, that to me, so like when you read the first John 18 through I guess 23, and you, the verse 20, it says, we have an anointing from the, from the, Holy, from the Holy One and you, and you know all things. So like me and I were talking about this yesterday at dinner and I was like, my only concern is, which I don't feel like I should worry about it because God speaks to me honestly. He likes he speaks to you when you pray, okay? And you would know. But it's like, am I going to know? Yeah. You know, and I believe I will. But I feel like when he read that, it just it was like the you know all things kind of like jumped off the page to me. That it's like I'm going to know. Yeah. I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And yeah. as long as you're in the communications with the Lord, he's going to tell you. Yeah. The, the people, I think, the people that leave the church uh, during this during this time and, and that don't really know are people who are more looking to man than to Christ because they'll take this, okay, well, this political person or or this rich person, not even or whatever, and they'll look to them more and they'll go. You got to have this person here because he's saying this, this, and this, and this is what's going to happen, and this is how it's going. The world's going to change, and so you got to put this person in, or you got to say, you see what I'm saying? I think they're looking more to man than to Christ, and I think those are the people that will more than likely be to see, because even if you look at it right now, they're separating the political boundaries. It's always been the public Democrat. So it's always been a separate, it's always been separate political, um, what, platforms. But most people that I have been around myself don't look at this political person to save the world that I've been around in my personal life, that personal relative, personal people I've been in churches and things with they don't look at this political person to save the world. On the other side, I have seen that a lot in the church. I've seen that a lot in these last few years where people are looking to, and, and they will not say that. They won't say, well, we look to Christ and everything, but what they, but what, but their words and what they do and how they do certain things, they're looking at this man. They feel like this man is going to save the world, yeah. but that's not, God can put anybody in there. Mm -hmm. If he can speak through rocks, it does not matter who's in the, in the White House because mm -hmm. God, if, if God ordained that, he's going to put whoever he wants in there. If whatever needs to be done, it's going to be done. You don't have to have this, you know, you can have somebody who's independent. 
You can have a nonpartisan person in there and God is it's going to be done. It's going to be fulfilled. So it does not matter. You know, I think that's what happened. I think that you take your ass off of Christ and you think this person is going to do it. Because God has no to do him. Because he's the only person God can use. Yeah, right. You know, it's the only person in the world God can use. So, yeah. you know, because God's <laughs> limited, right? He can only use this one person. <laughs> he doesn't use nobody else. So, I mean, that's, this is how. Yeah. yeah. The way I look at the separation of um, the certain God is going to. It's coming down to who the place is equal, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty much what it's coming down to. Mm -hmm. Whether you say you a Christian or not, mm -hmm. whether you say you're born again believer or not, mm -hmm. whether you serve in God or not, it's coming down to good versus evil because there are people on both sides, on the Christian side, that say that they're Christians, but at the same time, there's evil, that they're showing it. They're showing hatred and all this. On the other side, the ones that's not saved, we expect them to do that. So it's not that we give them a pass, but we just expect that. We expect right. it from someone that's not saved right. to do that. So, so you have to separate them. You have to separate the good versus evil with the people that say that, that don't say they saved versus the ones that say they saved. Now, with all this going on, with all the racial injustice and pandemic and all that, now you can identify easily the ones that's good versus evil yeah. because it comes out. That's why you, as an individual, have to be careful with how you conduct yourself and your train, your way of thinking. You have to be careful not to fall into the good versus evil, you know, on either side because you can say some things and do some things that just not, don't line up with the way you talk. You know, you might say one thing, but you get people watching you. It may not, it just may not line up. So you just have to really be careful, which is, it's, it's a hard balance to do that. That's the reason why I say all the time, well, I'm, I'm renewing my mind today. I'm, 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 ch I'm turning my life, I'm changing my life today. You know, it, yeah. it was a joke at one time, kind of, but it's true. I do that. I have to change because if I don't, I have to renew my mind and renew the way I think and re renew the way I act daily because every day there's something. There's something else that's coming that you have to face, good versus evil, that you have to make a decision on which way are you going with, with this? Which, which way are you, what are you thinking about this as far as good versus evil? So, you know, that's, that's something that's really, yeah, you know, It's like the scripture says that you have to walk out your salvation. Yeah. yeah. What, daily take up your cross? Yeah. Yeah, you do. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it is every day. Well, and another thing, this is so good at the beginning. This is this is so good today. <laughs> it's a, well, another thing I saw that you were teaching about, you know, the first beats, the political. So that makes you understand why there's also why there are people that looking politically at everything. Like this is the person God sent because of the political thing. But I think what they may be missing is the Antichrist, the political thing. Mm -hmm. And, and he's going to be in the wolf's clothing, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and so I think that's the part where they might be missing. Stop that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thing, not to say he's right or wrong, but I just thought that it was interesting that he said that the papacy institution was the Antichrist just because of the political, because here's this religious personality, this religious figure, and they had so they had such a strong connection, um, you know, in Europe with like the kings and the emperors, um, and you know they just had so much authority in that in that time, and then we can we'll learn about it and do more about the Holy Roman Empire, but I just thought that was interesting how he kind of made that connection versus just one individual pope. Right. Hmm.
Lord, we just lift you up and we just thank you, God. We thank you for the word that we've heard today. We thank you for the manna that we're feeding on, Father, because this is something we will be feeding on for a while. And I thank you, God, for opening up our eyes to see and our ears to hear. And for God, that the words you've given to honor, Father, to give us understanding and, and teach us, Father, and that we're learning it, Father. And we pray, God, as we go through this week, that we'll study these words and, and meditate on the word and, and just read your word and just listen to you, Father, and just get everything we need from you, Father, that we would be followers of you, Father, and not followers of man. That, God, as you lead us, we will follow, Father. And we just thank you for that. We just pray to this bless our week and we just honor you father and praise you and, and bless your name in your name we pray amen, amen. amen.